Hey, good people. Nell here from the Overclocker Magazine. No, it's not deja vu. I have yet another Asus Prime GPU to talk to you about. And this time, however, it's from AMD in the form of the Asus Prime Radeon RX 9060 XT, the 8 gigabyte model to be precise. As per usual, before anything else, let's talk about pricing, especially between this 8 gigabyte model and its 16 gigabyte counterpart. So, on Amazon, this model retails for about 380 US dollars, and the 16 gigabyte model is 430 US dollars. However, here in SA and specifically at Woodware, the 8 gigabyte model is 9,973 versus the 10,279 rand for the 16 gigabyte model. That's a 300 rand price difference only for twice the memory. Now, in light of this, I'll say this now that regardless of the performance and what I say beyond this point, with such a minuscule price difference between these two models, definitely get the 16 gigabyte card. It'll last longer, and while I can't be sure right now, it'll have better performance than what you'll see here, if only because of the obvious limits of 8 gigabyte cards in 2025. That being said, and in the context of just having looked at another Prime card not too long ago, I'll not spend too much time on what this card looks like, the cooler, and all of that stuff that you are familiar with. In fact, if I showed you the 5060 Prime without the box, you'd not be able to tell them apart, outside of the size, of course. The 9060 XT is 304 by 126 millimeters and 50 millimeters thick, where the 5060 Prime is 268 by 120 millimeters. Outside of this, they are identical. Three axial fans, a dual BIOS switch, uses an 8-pin PCIe connector and with no RGB lighting to speak of. Mind you, this model only has three display outputs instead of four. Temperature-wise, what I did not expect with this card, actually, is for it to run cooler than the 5060. It was about 6 degrees cooler, as you can see, which is rather significant given that it draws 22% more power than the 5060 when gaming. Since we're talking about efficiency, we may as well talk about synthetic and gaming performance. Testing was done at the AMD Ryzen 9 9900X, the ROG Crosshair X870E Apex, 64GB of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 memory, all of which was powered by the Corsair HX1500i and cooled by the Corsair Titan RX LCD AIO. Starting with 3 Mark, with the exception of the Speedway test, the 9060 XT is just much better than the 5060 as it should be, as its direct competitor is the 5060 Ti and not the 5060 like I have here. That being said, in pure ray tracing performance, NVIDIA obviously still has an advantage and it shows in 3 Mark Speedway. In fact, even overclocking can help the situation here. NVIDIA's GPUs just have an architectural advantage where ray tracing is concerned, at least in this class of GPU. What I did not expect, however, is for the 5060 to still be ahead in the Unigen Superposition 4K benchmark. Yes, the differences are small, but I would have thought the 9060 XT would be much superior here, especially given that there is no ray tracing here at all. As you'd expect, overclocking swings things in favor of the AMD card, but then again, when you overclock the 5060, it also goes above that to a score of about 11,900 or so. Now, before the gaming tests, Let's briefly talk about the overclocking process. It's straightforward, and while AMD does provide a comprehensive tool for overclocking, as you know, I stuck with GPU Tweak 3 because, well, why not? Yes, there's a 20 MHz boost or turbo mode, but it really doesn't do anything for performance. What we actually care about is the manual OC via the negative voltage offset, increased power budget, and clock frequencies. To this end, there wasn't much out of the ordinary here. The most I could get stable was 250 MHz on the core, and 550 megahertz or so on the memory. These are the settings that you'll see when you see the OC results for the card. This is what increased the power draw in gaming by about 10%, bringing it close to 200 watts, which I think for this class of card is a little on the high side. But either way, the first gaming test I have is the Unreal Engine 5 powered Expedition 33. Here we can see that the 9060 XT is 8% faster than the 5060, while overclocking adds an additional 7% to this. What follows, however, is Spider-Man 2, which is one of the games which highlight the challenges facing 8 gigabyte cards in 2025, at least with the settings I chose. Here, both the 5060 and the 9060 XT deliver identical performance for the most part. Yes, the 5060 is ahead by just two frames per second, but it's clear that memory here is the bottleneck. Clock speeds don't change this. As such, FSR or XESS is not optional for this title, but a must 
when using the 9060XT. Next up is Ellen Wake 2, which of course by default uses upscaling in either FSR or DLSS. Of course, I used FSR here for this card. However, Remedy has yet to update this title to support FSR 4, which means the fact that the 9060XT is offering 14% better performance than the 5060 is rather meaningless. FSR in this title causes too much of a sacrifice in image quality and stability. It's not a one-to-one -one or anywhere near that with the 5060 when using DLSS. Ultra performance in DLSS looks much better than the best quality mode with FSR 2.2. We then get to Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Here, the 9060XT is about equal to the 5060. However, I did experience stuttering and big frame latency spikes, hence the unpleasant 1% lows. Lowering the game settings didn't change this much, so I suspect it's a driver or game issue which will be addressed at a later point, at least I hope so. That being said, it's a clear win for the 5060 here. Then we move on to F1 2024. This is the first test where the Radeon card is outright faster than the 5060, with zero compromise to image quality or performance. The 9060XT is just 10% faster here, overclocking, extending this further as you'd expect. We then have Cyberpunk 2077 with the latest 2.3 patch. As usual, I used medium RT preset as I don't think playing without RT on a GPU from 2025 is something potential buyers would be happy about. Either way, I can't be sure here, but I think there may be a memory limit here as well. Both the 5060 and the 9060XT deliver identical performance, with just the overclock on the 9060XT allowing it to pull ahead by 10%. We then move on to Forza Horizon 5. And to my surprise, the 9060XT here actually loses to the 5060. I would have never guessed this, but the numbers are repeatable. Still, both cards offer more than enough performance at this resolution. Finally, we have Hitman World of Assassination. Here, the Radio 9060XT scores another victory, offering 10% better performance at these settings than the 5060, adding another 12% on top of that with the overclock, which is more than I would have expected. Well, with the performance figures out the way, it's clear to see here that despite the 9060XT being a direct competitor to the 5060Ti, it finds itself competing even with the 5060, and I suspect that's largely due to the limitations of the 8GB frame buffer. As such, I'll repeat what I said at the beginning of this review. If you've got your eye on this card, then simply buy the ASUS Prime Radeon RX 9060XT 16GB model. The price difference is negligible, and in fact, you're guaranteed to get even better performance than what I've shown you here. Either way, you'll decide if this level of performance is worth the asking price. While I can't recommend the 8GB model at this price, I think there's something to be said about the 16GB Prime model being somewhat decent value. Anyway, that's it from me in the ASUS Prime Radeon RX 9060 XT. And until the next time, please do take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care and peace.